thank you this morning. What a great privilege we have to be in your presence. There is no better place to be than where we are right now. Lord, therefore, speak your word into our hearts. Amen. And let it impact our lives graciously in Jesus' name. Amen. Understanding the gospel of the kingdom. Most of the times when we hear the gospel of the kingdom, we are thinking, or when we hear preach the gospel of the kingdom, what we limit it to mostly is preach salvation to people. Right? But the gospel of the kingdom is much, much more than that. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ says something in John. He said, I am the door. Right? I am the door of the ship. You remember that? Now, if you are coming to this facility now, you stand at the door and then you enter. So you have entered. What next? You get a picture now. Salvation is the door. In fact, when Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. And that word see also means enter. Are you following me? So you are saved, right? That means you have what? Entered. If you enter this facility from there, what next? So we celebrate so much the entrance, but forget for what purpose. Ends where the kingdom, a gospel of the kingdom comes in. Amen? And that's why I chose to talk to us on understanding that gospel of the kingdom. The Lord Jesus Christ brought, bought us by his blood, our inheritance in God, which gives, which gives us our citizenship of heaven. Amen? But with that citizenship comes what? Responsibility. That responsibility, which is to extend the kingdom and see his kingdom values established on the earth. Amen. I remember a pastor called me. Someone was trying to hide some money and he did it with his wife in an account with his wife name, wife's name on it. And the wife died. And the person was coming to him for the money. The money the person didn't want him to know she has in the first place. Did you get it? He said, what I've got to do? I don't know any money you are talking about, right? And the money is in their name. I mean, even the bank has already told them, just bring the death certificate and uh, you can do whatever you like with the money. So he called me. And that person has been doing him evil before anyway. He said, now I have opportunity to show this person. And I said, well, we are citizens of heaven. We don't do that. <laughs> you see the point I'm saying? We are citizens of heaven. We don't do that. I said, you can't do that. Let her have our money. Amen? So you see, we have, with your salvation also comes responsibility. In fact, let me say responsibilities. Amen? We will go much into that as the year progresses. The one I'm focusing on today is Understanding the gospel of the kingdom, the second part. 
Like I said, most of our preaching today has been centered around the gospel of salvation and its benefits. The church celebrates those benefits so much, but we forget responsibility, which is more important than the benefits. You know what? Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then the benefits will come. So I want us to be so enlarged in our mind concerning the gospel of the kingdom. There has been so little understanding of that today in the church world, forgetting that we are saved to do something. We are not just saved to go to heaven. Amen? If not, a lot of us will not be here today. The day you get saved, you just... You understand me? You know, even the Lord Jesus Christ was praying. He said, Father, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of this world. You remember? Because we have things to do. But I will keep them in the midst of evil while they are doing their assignment. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I'm not talking of two gospels. It's just one. The gospel of the kingdom. The entrance to it is salvation. You know, Elder taught on that two weeks or three weeks ago when he delivered his canon, canon cardinal sermon. Amen. And next week, Pastor Aminu will be giving us his own. Pastor, I thought you would say amen to that. Amen. Okay. You will know whether you heard or not. Please understand me. We have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of his dear son. But then comes the responsibility, are you following me, of being a citizen of heaven. We read from Hebrews this morning, and I want to show something significant. Hebrews chapter 6, because Paul, Paul which we believe is the writer of Paul, will say, look, there are things we don't have to be doing again and again. We need to move forward. Let's read it. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. He said, therefore, leaving the, the, the doctrine, the principles, sorry, of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto. Did you see that word? Leave some and go unto. Did you see that? Leaving the principles. Okay, you are saved. You want to be saved again? <laughs> Or you want to be like me? After I got saved that month, eh? any message they preach, I'm going forward again. Because the thing was just, I don't know whether you have that experience, it was just turning you, turning you. Eh? So you can't be saved two times. <laughs> he said, therefore, living. Can I hear you say living? living. Say it like you mean it. Living. Did you hear that? Therefore, living. So there he say, he said, living, what do we live? The principles of the doctrine of Christ. He's not saying forget them. He said, stop, do, don't keep dwelling on the same thing. You get my point? Let us go on onto. Can I say go on onto? Did you hear that? Leave, it, leave this. Move forward. Now let's follow. Let us go on onto perfection. Now he enumerated the principles he was talking about. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from the dead, which, bring, which brought about our salvation. From dead works of faith towards God. Verse 2. Of the doctrine of baptisms, of, of laying on of hands, or the resurrection of the dead, or eternal judgment. But look at verse 3. I want to show you something. He said... I'm not saying forget. He said, can somebody read that loud for us? I said, can somebody read it louder? Not just can somebody read it. And this will we do. Is Are you sure you are louder than her now? And this will we do. <laughs> okay. So it's not saying forget. You understand me? You, 
You can't forget on laying on of hands. You can't forget on faith. You can't forget on the doctrines of baptism. You, you can't forget. This we will do. I mean, once in a while, God allows us to refresh our minds, to renew our minds with them. Fine. This we will do if God permits. Now, verse 3. Oh, okay, sorry. Verse 3, let's leave it there. So, we have these foundational teachings. The Bible calls them foundational teachings. It's like you want to build a house. You got the land, you dug the foundation, the foundation is set. He said, I've finished. That's what many of us are doing with our faith. Speaking tongues, I'm born again. I finished. Can you live in such a house? So you now have to move on. You've laid the foundations. You now have to begin to put things on it to the degree to which you want. Are you following me? That's what he's saying. Those are foundational principles. Repentance. You want to be repenting every day? <laughs> Faith, baptisms, you have done it, you want to do it again. Do you understand me? It's not that we don't teach them again. It's not that we don't talk about them again. It's not that we don't operate by them again. Laying on of hands, resurrection of death. So the scripture refers to these as principles of the fundamentals of Christianity. The first aspect of the kingdom of God that Jesus preached. But then the Bible says there is more. Can I hear you say there is more? There is more to being saved. There is more to being baptized with the Holy Ghost. There is more to being baptized with water. There is more. Amen. There is more. It's like um, you're in a game. I don't know much about basketball or your American football, but I know they all have half time, right? Like soccer. So you are leading in half time, you say you have won. Is that how they win? <laughs> you get my point? The game is not over, there is more. There is more. Can I say there is, more? there is more? Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ himself articulated the more for us in teaching us to pray. When he said, let us pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So understand the gospel of the kingdom. That Jesus declared. It is where we move on, like I taught last week, in establishing it in the kingdoms of men, in securing the nations of the world. And that's why Jesus said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the earth come. What is the meaning of the word gospel? You see, I've told you something before. Most of us, because we read those words from scripture, we think they are just Bible words. No, they are words. Pastor Amino just uh, graduated for his PhD. That's good news, is it not? That's gospel. Is it not strange to say that's gospel? Because you have limited gospel to just preaching the Bible, Pastor Uche, and I carried. But the gospel means good news. So when he's saying the good news of the kingdom, it's like you get to someone, you say there is more that God has for you in life. He wants you to be in command of your life, be in command of your environment, be in command of your territory. The same way Adam was in command before he left it. He wants you to rule that territory for him with the principles of heaven. Do you understand me now? See, there is more. First, you assert yourself, then you rule. 
Amen. That's the good news. You don't have to be under anymore. You can be in charge. That's the good news. The good news of the kingdom. Glory to God. Those of you who still remember, we have morning devotion. Some have not even attended it once. Eh? Don't look down, look up. Eh? You have not attended morning devotion once. Some have retired. I was teaching, I think it was during the week, Elder, on a man came to Jesus and said, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said, it's not about following me. There is more to do. He said, but wait, oh, let me first go and bury my father. What did Jesus say? Follow me. Let the dead bury their dead. There are, if you say that to an Ethiopian, you are looking for trouble. Am I talking? You say he should not bury his father, he should follow you. <laughs> That's tr trouble. Or you go to Anambra to go say that one. <laughs> they will stone the person. <laughs> but to show you the importance of what he's talking about. The, thank you. The value of what he's talking about. There's work to be done. Or we get saved, we sit around, we come to church and then disappear and then next Sunday. There's more to be done. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's time to move on from the state of salvation to the enlargement of the kingdom. Remember, we have also taught it a few weeks or months ago. The church is not the kingdom. The church is God's agency of establishing the kingdom on earth. Amen? The church is the body of Christ, whose mandate is to promote the kingdom and extend the principles in every sphere of life. That's the church. So we, do, we need to correct this misunderstanding of the gospel priorities. Thank, thank God for repentance from dead works. Thank God for faith. Thank God for baptisms. Thank God for all of those fundamental principles. But let's move on into what we are here for. Glory to God. That is establishing the love, the integrity, the righteousness of God in our sphere of life. Glory to God. I pray today that the King of Heaven will open your eyes or the eyes of your understanding. Hallelujah. Because until the eyes of our understanding are enlightened, we are not able to truly enter into what really belongs to us. Glory to God. The gospel of the kingdom is fundamentally a gospel of change. It's a gospel of what? Change. The gospel of the kingdom is fundamentally a gospel of change. The change which begins with you and the change which you establish around you. Amen? The change that begins with you, within you, and the change you bring to your world. The gospel of the kingdom is essentially a gospel of change. If when you say, I've said this before, you met Jesus, but we can't see the change or the changes, we will doubt your meeting him. True or false? The kingdom of God brings kingdom order and power through that relationship. That you can stand, I, I, if I just digress and ask this question, where you are walking, much of what of the kingdom of God do they know through you? Some of us say, no, 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 I don't take it there. How can somebody, something be within you and you don't take it to where you are? Is that possible? Is that possible? 
You have some, he said, the kingdom of God is within you. But you say, I don't take it to my work. You know, they don't like me to talk about anything like that in my place of work. How is that possible? Can you go anywhere without what is, with, without what is within you? Is it possible? So how much of it has been seen through you? Your company kills people anyway. That's what they are doing. They're doing a defense contract. Oh, they're helping to reduce the number of people. <laughs> so you, you, you get what I'm saying? At home, at work, on the streets, is within you, but you have to what? Manifest it. You have to manifest it. I said it before. Chibike, give me water. I said it before. Citizens of the kingdom walks in love and lives by faith. You know, they saw them in the, the early church. They saw that they have changed. They speak differently. They do things differently. These are like that Christ, you remember? Hence the word Christian came about. And the kingdom expresses itself through us to the world. That's why God impacts us with his spirit and expects us to express that nature, his character. Thank you. It's nature, it's character in all spheres of life. Glory to God. How much of the kingdom in you have you taken to others? I repeat it again. Kingdom citizens walk in love and live by faith. How are you doing it? How much of the nature and character of the kingdom is expressed by your life in your world? That's the question. Glory to God. I say glory to God. What we call the Great Commission today, uh, Matthew 28 from verse 19. He said, go ye therefore and do what? No. Go ye therefore and do what? Teach. To preach is easy. To teach is a different body because you can't teach what you don't know. You can do a lot of preaching that you don't know. You just go, 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 and you are done. <laughs> but to teach, precept must be upon precept, line upon line. Amen? I said Matthew 28, verse 19, put it up. Therefore, he said, go ye therefore and teach, did you see it? All nations, baptizing them in the name of, teach them, get them saved. Let's put it that way. And teach them the ways of the kingdom. The next verse. What are we to teach them? He said, teaching them to observe what? All things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. Don't forget, when Jesus was rebuking the Pharisees, he said they teach it, but they don't do. So that's not what he's talking about here. If you are teaching it, it means you are doing it first before you start teaching it. If I may just add that to it. So we are to take the gospel with us everywhere, to see it established everywhere. You have been working in a place, let's say, for one year. How many people have even been saved through you in that place? I'm just asking. Is that not a serious matter? How many people have been saved through you in that place? You spend more time with them, do you know? Because when you go to work, Monday to Friday, maybe to Saturday, some of you is even close Sunday. You spend more time there. 
And then you come with that devilish mandate that says, don't, don't, don't bring it to work or don't, 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 you know, they don't like it here. Meanwhile, all the other ones brought their own there. Do, are you following me? So how many people? You started work about a few months. How many people have you preached to there? Mm. Answer noted. Amen. <laughs> so I'm just giving us understanding that gospel. It's not I'm saved and I'm enjoying church. No, there is responsibility that goes with the gospel. And that responsibility is what attracts more the benefit. That's why I say, and these things shall be what? Hearted. It is in transforming our world, our communities, our environment, reflecting on the virtues of the kingdom. It looks like I've been saying on this point now for about three weeks, and I will stay on it until I have released to move forward because we need to get that message. The kingdom of God is within you, so everywhere you go, it must manifest. Amen? It must manifest everywhere you go with the purpose of establishing it there. Remember Revelations 11, 15, and the kingdoms of this world are become. So that place you are walking is to become. They transform through what you carry. Your home is to become. Not that somebody comes to visit your home and they are choked in their heart because the environment is something else. Amen? So it become the gospel. It's in becoming, just like we read earlier. Let us move on. Being a disciple of Christ is not just a mere intellectual commitment. Of just quoting the Bible, it is walking in the steps of Christ, impacting our world by his spirit with his good works. Remember, I read that scripture where Jesus said, not all that call me Lord, Lord shall enter. He said, but those that do what I say. One of the most important elements of discipleship is also what we call reproduction. Disciples produces disciples. You know that. So how many have you produced? No. Why am I saying all this? Do you know you have received so much from heaven? The funny thing is, or let me not use the word funny, is that a lot of us don't know what we have, and you won't know until you start expressing it. You have been impacted with by so much. Is the Spirit of God in you or not? So what more do you need? But when you start expressing that, you also will be amazed by what you have within you. And that's how you become fortified with it. You understand me? What you start expressing, you get established in. I want to give you a challenge today. And I don't want you to see this challenge that, oh, because you just want us to bring people to church. No, of course, that is it, but that's not just it. I need you to express that kingdom to someone this week. Not just passing by, that becomes consolidated by it. 
you know, you can go on the street and just preach, 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 and go. Nobody gets saved, nobody gets anything, but just give people. I'm not condemning that either. But this one, I want you to take it from beginning to the end, if you know what I mean. Amen? Glory to God. You are going to college, right? You have to take the kingdom with you there. Can I hear you shout amen? amen. I didn't hear. I said shout. Amen. Is that shouting? I know you can shout louder than that. When you are with your friends, your voice is louder than that. You take the kingdom with you. Amen? And you are spreading it there. And before you know it, you become a focal point of the kingdom. Uh, God will protect you and secure you beyond measure for that. You are friends at work. You are friends. They tell you things of their own. Say, look, sit down. I want to tell you something of my own. Your families. And then you pick that person off from salvation to discipleship. So the kingdom of God is much more than just going to heaven. As a matter of fact, if we don't treat that responsibility well here, we may not get there. Glory to God. So what am I saying in closing today? The kingdom of God is much more than just going to heaven. The gospel of the kingdom is much more than your sins being forgiven. So when your sins are being forgiven, what next? You want to accumulate more so that you can forgive you again? Do you understand? <laughs> you get the point? It's much more than that. The gospel. is the fulfillment of the Father's plan to bring man into fellowship with him, which we all know, wherein that man might extend his will on the earth. We are God's agents. We are what? We are God's agents. So let's start behaving like one. He said the kingdom of God is like yeast, you remember? that you have dough, flour, right? And you put just a little yeast there. And then over time, it takes over the old place. So which place have you taken over? Not with your guns and your sword. Which place have you taken over? Eh? <laughs> We have to start taking over places. Amen? We have to start doing what? Glory to God. Finally, remember this. You are not an ordinary person. You are a citizen of heaven. A citizen of heaven is from above. And he said, he that is from above, is above all. But when we don't manifest that, we look like somebody from here. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. Not as he was in this world. You know, the Jesus that trekked this world is different, not this, not a they are different persons. It's different from the Jesus of today because the Jesus of today is glorified. He has obtained. And the Bible says, as he is. Even if he's as he was that time that we are, I think it's more than sufficient. Do you understand me? How much more as he is glorified? He says, so are we in this world. So let's manifest it. Hmm? Let's do what? Let's start manifesting it. There's something to my, you know, listen to this. Peter and John were going into the temple. You remember the story? At the gate, beautiful. And that man came asking him some of them, 
What did Peter say? Okay. More? Ah, you jump. Is that what your PhD taught you? Because that's not correct. He said, such as I have. That's the key. He knew he had something. Amen? He knew, the guy was asking for money. He said, that's what you're asking for. I'm not interested, but I know I have something that you need. Such as what? I have. What do you have? Chevrolet. What do you have? Do you understand me now? Peter knew such, I have something in me. Such as I have, give I you. Rise up and walk. Do you understand me now? So what do you have? Show us. Amen? Are you empty? Only one person answered me. I said, are you empty? No. So you have something of God in you. Okay. It's not for you to keep in your stomach. It's for you to manifest to your world. Amen. Such as I have, Peter said. He couldn't have said that if he didn't know he had it. Amen. He would not have said that, but he knew he had something. He knew he had something that profess solution to that man's lameness. And when he manifested it, the world erupted. You know how many people got saved by that alone that day? I think the Bible recorded about 5,000 or something. Such as I have. Can I hear you say, I have something in me? I have the kingdom in me. Amen? I have the kingdom in me. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory to God. The kingdom of God is in me. The king, when you wake up in the morning and you see yourself in the mirror, you say the kingdom of God is in me. Jesus said it. He said the kingdom is within you. So go manifest it. I like to hear your testimony of that manifestation next Sunday. And I will put you on the stand. I'm talking to all of you. Oh, of course, you just said yes now. And you are now saying it on me. Glory to God. And those of you online don't think you can hide. I will put you on the stand too. That's the message I've brought for you today. You are not empty. You have the kingdom within you. Manifest it. That place you are working, those friends you have, I have something important to tell you. Somebody is in need, is in crisis, manifest it. Amen? Can I hear you say I will manifest it? There's something to manifest. There's something to display. Your world is waiting for what you have. Amen? Amen? Your world is waiting for you to show them the reality of what you have. So show them. Amen? Amen. Show them. The kingdom is within you. Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. Can I hear you say it with me again? The kingdom is within me. I am a citizen of heaven. I am here on the earth to manifest the reality of the kingdom to my world. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Just commit yourself to God. Ask him again for grace. Ask him 